but the stomach contents show what they really came here for. Bats. So how do they catch them? It's late afternoon, and the bats are stirring. They would be easy pickings if only the croc could climb. They start to leave the caves en masse. Fruiting trees in the forest are a dinner bell. The sweet smell of ripe mango lures them out in their droves. Matt waits for any evidence of hunting. In the traffic jam, some bats collide and are grounded. Thin wing membranes clog with slimy guano. Croc waits in the shadows, but it knows Matt's there. He's seen enough. It seems likely this abundant food source is what attracted the crocs to the caves in the first place. So far, the crocs Matt's found are living in caves that have free access to the forest. And they're all the regular colored dwarf crocs. He's yet to find the legendary orange crocodile. The network of underground passageways extends over one square mile. That's around 200 American football fields. An underground metropolis carved out over time by water. In horizontal channels, the crocs are able to come and go freely. But where the water has cut vertically through the rock, the result is a cavern you can only fall into. Once inside, crocs can become trapped. 